Hi, it's Alex from Sigma here. Today I'm unboxing and reviewing the Unify Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus and the Unify Protect software. We'll talk about the device, its connections, a quick setup using a mobile app, operating temperatures, and how the web interface looks. And please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you enjoy my videos. At the front, we have the hard disk quick release tray and at the right side, the LCD screen. At the rear, we have the USB power feed from the left to the right that requires quick charge 2.0, uh, an RJ45 plug that supports PoE, a micro SD card for restoring backups and a USB port to plug an external hard drive. This is the quick release mechanism that pops the hard drive out. It is a Toshiba 5400 RPM, one terabyte, consumer grade version. The same as you would find on low end laptops. Don't expect a lot of life out of, the, out of this hard drive operating at a 24 seven environment and at high temperatures. Now I'm going to show you what happens when you plug a USB-C power um, that is not quick charge to the all compliant. In this case, I'm plugging a 5 volt, 4 amps, and you can see it doesn't work. Now let's connect a quick charge to the all compatible charger. And let's see. Yeah, it works fine. And it is a 12 volt, 1.67 amps, 18 watts charger. Now let's try to test the PoE connection. So that means powering the device with a compatible network switch that provides power and data over a single cable. The LCD displays some useful information like the IP address of the device, internet bandwidth use, uh, wireless devices and CCTV cameras. If you have all Unify products on the network, it integrates nicely. After one hour powered on using PoE, the case of the device is at 35 degrees Celsius or 95 degrees Fahrenheit. The ambient temperature was around 25 degrees Celsius or 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Now let's jump into the Android app and set up the device. You can set up the device using either your local network or a direct connection using Bluetooth. So let's give it a name and check settings and proceed. You can give the geolocation permission if you want to set up rules based on your location. Um, a microphone to talk back to cameras that have speakers and uh, the photo library to save footage to your phone. So we have an update available. Let's install it and wait for it to come back online. Meanwhile, I went to the web interface and imported a configuration from my old Unify video server running Linux that was running the cameras. I forgot to record the procedure. Apolo apologies. Um, now we are back on the app and uh, the cameras should be showing. Yeah, the cameras are all showing because I imported the configuration from my previous CCTV server. Uh, I have the camera set up at the highest quality possible at 30 frames per second. Let's see the timeline for this camera. You notice you can scroll hours of footage very quickly and smoothly. That is one of the main advantages with the Unify Protect software that you don't get when uh, using the DIY server running, running the Unify video software. Um, to download uh, a video clip, just tap the options icon uh, at the top and left corner, tap the download clip, then select the beginning and the end of the time of the video you want and hit the download button. It will generate an mp4 file that you can attach to emails, send to Dropbox, upload to a website. It's universally playable. You will not need to use a computer to download or send footage to other people, making the process much quicker and easier. Just a bit more on the scrolling effect here. If there is any movement detected, you see the placeholders as you scroll. 
Here you can see better the movement detection. The longer the movement recordings have thumbnails showing, and if you pitch and zoom in, you can see even more of these thumbnails. It can be a bit tricky to get to the beginning of the recording, if you have many, uh, as you need to scroll with your fingers. If you just tap the thumbnail, you will go to the beginning of the recording. Yeah, I guess someone is enjoying the ride on one of those electric scooters. But now let's zoom in all, all the timelines so we can scroll quicker through the day and demonstrate a bit more of the scrolling speed and smoothness. By the way, you can pinch and zoom into a video recording on your phone. Again, just pinch to zoom in into the video feed. And you can pinch and zoom out as well. It's very smooth, it works really well. This is the screen you see a summary of all the recorded movements for all your cameras. It's just a different way to present the same data as you scroll down uh, an individual camera. But here you can see all the cameras at one single interface. Very useful when you have multiple cameras and want to track the movement of something that goes from one camera to another. In the controller, we can see general information about your device. Um, reset the factory, download the configuration file, configure video purging, and uh, local device automatic configuration backup, which can also go to SD card. You can also send push alerts when the, the cameras are disconnected or when movement is detected. If someone disconnects a camera on purpose, for example, to hide something, uh, you can get a notification. Content Cloud allows you to access your device remotely without having to configure your router or firewall ports. The Updates section. I don't like setting up uh, automatic updates, as it can happen when I'm traveling and if something goes wrong, I lose, I lose access to my cameras. I'll... Web Interface. I'm using Microsoft Edge Chromium Stable Channel. It works perfectly well and to be honest, it's better than Chrome. These are my main cameras. Uh, when you click on them, it shows you a live picture every few seconds, as it doesn't display the live footage straight away. You need to click on it to play uh, on the play button uh, on the picture to see the live video feed. You also see the configuration of each camera and the general information. Uh, recording can be always on or just when movement is detected, and the motion zones record only specific areas of the camera, avoiding false detections. Time to check the live video feed. It defaults to 720p, even though I have a powerful computer and cameras are recording at 1080p. Let me change it to a full fat 1080p, then make the image crispier. Here you can adjust video settings like brightness, contrast, and night vision. And for the time lapse on the computer, it behaves similar to the phone app. Uh, the features are similar, but I can't help with the scrolling. The phone app seems much better, is smoother and more friendly to scroll. I guess the focus of the development has been based on the app and then the web interface. That's where I expect most of the people who spend their time checking the footage anyway. What the web interface does better is the live tile view compared to the phone. Uh, I guess that's because you simply have more screen space and you can arrange the cameras in any way if you like. 
You can put a large TV somewhere with a small form factor computer showing the footage all the time live from several cameras. I think it's ideal for shops and receptionists. The event section shows all movements detected on a single pane. It is useful to follow movements across many cameras as a group stand by when the movement has happened. You can download the video clip, but you don't have an option to select how long the video can be. And just a quick look at the web interface settings. It is similar to the phone app, just a bit extended as you have more space to display the information. So concluding, why did I decide to get a Cloud E Gen 2 over the DIY Unify Video Linux server? Um, Ubiquiti announced they will stop releasing security updates and new features to the DIY version. And they are focusing their efforts into Unify Protect software, to I think to standardize the interface, possibly to make more money as well, and focus on a mobile first approach. If you think there is no subscription cost, uh, the cameras are not expensive and you can do pretty much all of it yourself. Uh, Unify Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus at uh, £180 uh, uh, or $220 US dollars is not a bad deal. It replaces a Unify network controller, uh, a Unify video controller, it comes with 1TB of storage and can be expanded to 5TB as well and it's very compact. I think it is a good value, it offers a fair amount of hardware. Um, my experience with it has been good so far, uh, but bear in mind my first Unity was faulty. Uh, the hard drive uh, kept disappearing from the device, even though the, the hard drive was absolutely fine after testing it on my computer. I formatted it, I did surface checks, it was fine, so it was a bit weird. Uh, the only way around was to RMA the device and uh, get a brand new replacement. Uh, it has been working fine now, it has been like 3 months since I deployed, uh, not, hit, not a hiccup, and, but I don't expect the hard drive to last that long working 24-7 and uh, it's around 40 degrees Celsius I would say where it is stored, that's around 105 Fahrenheit. So hard drives tend to fail quicker when they are over 30 something, 30 degrees. So I guess, like, an, it, it, I don't think it's gonna last longer than a year or two, the hard drive. Um, again, uh, please hit the like button if you like this video or if you find it was useful and let me know if you want to see more content on the Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus or any other related equipment. All right, thank you very much. Bye guys.